Welcome everyone. I am so glad you are able to join me for today's latest episode from our channel to look at the fourth offering from the widescreen series of Game & Watches. A wonderful Game & Watch which Nintendo called Simply Chef. But before we get into this episode's focus and star attraction, I'd like to firstly answer last episode's picture quiz question and brain teaser, that we on this channel like to call, what in the world? Here it is again, shown as it appeared at the end credits of our last episode. Do you know what Nintendo item is being shown to you here? Hopefully it was obvious, but just in case it fooled you, I'm ready to present the great unveiling now. It was of course, the original DS handheld, presented here in beautiful platinum silver. Brought to market in November of 2004, this handheld was a quantum leap beyond its predecessor, the Game Boy Advance SP. Wireless local gameplay, amazing 3D graphics, and still totally backwards compatible, a truly amazing console. But back to today's little treasure, the game and watch called Chef. Released on the 8th of September back in 1981, this game and watch sold a credible 500,000 units. Retaining the gold faceplate of the previous widescreen issued Game & Watches, Chef sported a deep red, or maroon plastic body. The handheld scene here is the United Kingdom's version, this is due to its CGL logo, which stands for Computer Games Limited who were the distributors for Nintendo's Game & Watches for Great Britain. The Game & Watch called Chef, had a retail product code of FP24, likely standing for frying pan. This Game & Watch was a single player, two primary button design. With the gameplay for Chef being simple and engaging, you're cooking either three or four meals in a kitchen, which the recipe requires it to be tossed or flipped in the air to varying heights as part of its preparation. The unit was also a fully functioning clock and alarm, which had an animated screen during rest mode. Similar to all previous game and watches, Chef was sold with two game modes, Game Mode A and Game Mode B. Here we see a representation of Game Mode A. Notice the chef has to maintain three food items in the air at the same time, using the frying pan to achieve this feat. Sadly when a food item is dropped, you will see a rat scurry out from the left corner to quickly scoop it up, and then continue to scurry away with its prize. This dropped food also represents a single life being lost. You start with three lives, and scoring is achieved by tossing a single food item back up in the air, a point is scored for every item successfully thrown back up. There is a black cat sat in a little green basket on the shelf in the top left corner. This cat adds to the complexity of the gameplay. By changing the tempo of falling food items, the cat achieves this by temporarily stabbing and holding a sausage with its fork. The duration that the sausage stays on the cat's fork is designed to be unpredictable, and falls off at random times. Now looking at Game Mode B, we see the gameplay is identical. With the exception of the number of food items being tossed, the difficulty has increased due to the number of food items in play, which has now risen to 4, and not the 3 we saw in Game Mode A. The rat is still here though, as previously stated he'll scurry out and collect any dropped foodstuffs. The obligatory lost life that follows the rat's endeavors is identified by a grinning semi-recumbent rat icon in the top right hand corner. To make matters worse, the rat icon has a cheeky wave that seems to be designed to rub salt in the wounds. Any lost lives will be returned to the player when they reach the score of 2 and 500 points, additionally every 100 points achieved will slow the gameplay to allow for a small rest bite before it ramps back up again. As with nearly all game and watches issued, the maximum score is 999. Interestingly any score beyond 999 will see the game reset to 0, and the game will automatically begin again. Also, if the game and watch is left unattended after a game's completion, then it will revert to the rest mode and time function. Well that just about wraps up the gameplay here. The instructions booklet that came with this handheld console, nicely covers the basic cautions and maintenance requirements, as well as listing the unit specifications. The game chef did receive quite a few follow-up cameos, firstly in the original Game Boy's Gallery 2 which was quickly upgraded for a re-release when the Game Boy Color version was made. Later in 2002, the Game Boy Advance system launched the Game & Watch Gallery 4, which was just called Advance in European Markets, that also featured today's focus game, Chef. Also interestingly, a hidden and unlockable version of today's Game & Watch, could be found in the 2006, and later 2008 Nintendo DS Coach themed releases such as the Cooking Guide shown here. The 3DS eShop also sold copies of Chef in 2012 as downloadable content. However, I believe it to be likely. 
listening to various comments and other presenters online. That most modern gamers come in here only know Mr. Game and Watch. With his frying pan and special attack as an unlockable character and in a particular version of Super Smash Bros. As briefly touched upon earlier in this video, various distributors operated under several different company names and logos throughout the world, here we see the British version, called CGL. Surprisingly Nintendo of America never released the game and watch chef. They were usually the best and brightest of any game box art in the world. I'm unsure why this game was missed but I've never seen a pocket sized version? If you know differently then please tell me in the comments section below. The French companies JI21 and Video Post served the needs of France and Belgium between them. While in Germany the company called Trikotronic produced the German language boxes and instructions. And from Japan the company called Takara Tony Arts, manufactured a solar key ring that was beautiful but sadly not playable, however it was fully animated with a moving simulation of the game and watches gameplay. This is where we wrap up today's look at the 13th Nintendo game and watch ever issued. Also the fourth widescreen in the series. I've enjoyed Chef and I hope you have too. This brings us to today's picture quiz question that we here at RCS like to call what in the world? I'm hoping you would hazard a guess in the comments below, and be as detailed as possible in your response to ensure those that know, really know. Otherwise join me in our next episode, which will be episode 24 to find out. All that's left for me to say is thank you. I really appreciate you stopping by and watching our channel, a small favor would equally be appreciated. Please like us, follow us, hit that subscribe button and activate the alarm to ensure you get preference on all our new content and updates. See you all soon.